Jehova Malak, Ola Molamat. Jehova Malak, Yami Rakis. Jehova Gadol, Makarian Tios. Jehova Erdonai, Jehova Elohim. Kurios Tios Pantakreta, Kurios Tios Pistos. El Da'at Yehova, El Emuna Yehova, Ibasilion Kurios Otios O Pantakreta, Basilios Basilion Kai Kurios Kurion. Yehova Gadol, Yehova Elohim Gadol Gadol Gebura, Yehova Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal. El Elohim Israel, Yehova Adonai, Gadol Gadol Kebura. Derek Emuna Bakar, Mishpat Shaba. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the giants and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkano, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Understanding the very purpose of our life as stated for us in Job chapter 19 verses 25 and 26. In support with the scriptures of Job chapter 19 verses 25 and 26, we have Amos chapter 3 verse 8 which teaches to us when there is not a prey, how would a lion roar? And when the Lord God Almighty has spoken, the men on this earth, what would they do except they would prophesy? Understanding this truth, O Lord, in these scriptures, we have a word to understand in Job 19.25 stating, And I, I know the one who is my Redeemer, that is, Gal contract, kinsman, the life, and that what he wants to show forth is the true life, the Zoe life. The life today where many people haven't come to realize what it is by becoming a disciples. The life of 2416, the Kaya life, the true life. This life shall stand in us, being emulated in this church age, in every believer, conforming to the image of Christ, so that it is no longer we who walk or who live, but it is Christ who walks in us and it is He who reigns in us. And that's a great principle we read in Philippians chapter 3. 
the same thing over here for us to understand dear brethren that every believer the calling wherewith they have been called in the church age demands that they need to grow up in the standards of bible doctrine and show forth the truth of the life that they need to live so he says the word akariyat which is called for us following after knowing my christ that is the redeemer of the lord in this soil we need to show forth the lord our god to be established and that's what every believer's work is under the great good shepherd who have called us in the church age in doing his great will and after this coming to job chapter 19 verse 26 he has given the principle of our life and he shows there that after skin of me and then it is been destroyed and that's what being put to death the old sin nature the skin refers back to the flesh so this flesh when it has been destroyed he says from this same flesh i shall prophesy about jehovah our lord our god it's not perceive but prophesy the reasons why we talk this in almost chapter 3 he says already when lord god has spoken who is it that they shall keep quiet but rather than prophesying the men who keep quiet are they who are been in the wicked sicknesses of their ministerial standards of thinking by not growing up in grace and in the knowledge of bible doctrine these are the only men who could keep quiet by forsaking the true life by not realizing the great standards of this truth by not understanding the calling in the church age and not even realizing the lord god what he has cleant he said in acts chapter 10 through peter verse 29 you shall not call it as unclean or uncommon but coming to us he said before the foundation of the world that is every church age believer who believes in christ before the foundation of the world they have been chosen and kept in the sight of the lord god to be holy and blameless so being separated unto the will of god and to the work of god how is it we are not able to become the disciples of the word of lord god he has taught for us many simple things when you grow up from brass to gold or copper to gold from iron to silver then from wood they have to become like copper from mud they have to become like brass that is the stones or the mud then the way how we would be blessed one shall be like thousand and a small one will be like a great nation that is what we are in the church age and lord of a god will be our lasting light not the sun or the moon the same light what he led in the form of a cloud and so many days the cloud was halting there they would halt and they would command only they would walk only at the command of the lord of a god in the wilderness if it were one month or two days or one year they would stand there so he guided them he led them in that light the way that they should walk the path that they should be going today as well he is guiding us the life that we need to live on this earth the life of a grown up grammatias as an adult son in christ when lord god the father has completely spoken to us through his completed can of scripture from genesis 11 to revelation 20 to 21 living out the apocrypha books who is it that they shall not prophesy it is you being an arrogant man not to become to show forth your lord god in your flesh because you haven't put to death your old sin nature to Christ and gets operated to live a life of truth and as long as you fail to live such a life you cannot show forth lord god's glorious glory in this church age by becoming a prophesying one to the lord that's what we read in job 19:26 this now in this flesh i shall perceive he says eloha but it is not perceive it has to be i shall prophesy about the lord god and dear brethren the life that you are living without becoming a scribe the life that you are enjoying without becoming the will of god when you stand at the judgment seat of christ it would be a great embarrassment for us 
Though much has been given and much has been told for us to teach and to make you disciples, they are called in the presence of Lord God the Father to prophesy and to teach the truth as New Testament prophets. Yet you have lost many things on this earth by listening to those things which are lies and not following to look upon those things which are in truth. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of Lord God by understanding the true life what has been designed for us in eternity past. We shall continue, dear brethren, after this prayer. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace to learn the word. We pray, Father, that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, would enlighten and challenge us by this message which are prepared and kept for us in today's state in eternity past. And every thought we speak, O Lord, acceptable in the sight only for thy glory, and nothing else than that. And as we go and share these things, Father, teach us to look the real use of this flesh. And we could know that we are acquainted with Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God. And Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, shall be established in us. And when we destroy this flesh completely, we shall perceive prophesizing the will of God in this New Testament, not just by foretelling the Lord, which you have done it through your prophets, but forthtelling the way how Jude 14 explains the way Enoch realized and taught when Lord God is coming to take vengeance upon the standards of this Asal Gians who haven't done thy will. To this section, Father, we pray as we're going to share these things, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. The life that has been designed for every believer in comparison to this passage in John chapter 10, verse 10. We read over here, The thief cometh not but for to steal. The thief is kleptes. The kleptes are nothing but false teacher who do not care to instruct their men, but rather they use their confidence for their own gain. Today, the teaching is not being done in our pulpits. You find everywhere their own prejudiced standards of thinking. You find everywhere coming to conclusions as per their mind it wants to teach them. And they continue to learn, which is absolutely sheer right. That's what we look over here, dear brethren, kleptes. And this kleptes have been ample to the core, followed by the standards of lestes. Kleptes, if they go back to steal, then the lestes will come back in the standards of violently. When one takes violently, the other one takes silently. So here, dear brethren, we look and understand that the thief, the one who cometh to steal, is being named as a false teacher. And why we are mentioning over here in John 10 about this, in verse 10, the false teachers, because they deprive you from becoming the disciples of the word of Lord God. That's why. So this clap test, what do they do? They do not care to instruct man. They do not make you to realize what you are in fulfillment of Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. The cataracts of process, the cataracts process. To make every believer perfect and complete in the thorough knowledge of his glory. They do not care about it. But rather they use their confidence, that is what the authority, what they have, for their own gain. And that is what is happening today in our pulpits, dear brethren. The same thing go here when we look. The thief cometh, the word cometh is erkomai, and the word meant to say, to arise, he shows forth, he finds a place for influence and he establishes. So what does he want? So he establishes these things so that the first one, he cometh not, that is what, he is been existing in you only to steal, but for to steal. Again, the work, what he does? He steals, the word klepto. 
he taketh away and he steals off and the word but what it has been used for us it says except to or in order that he may steal and to kill the word kill is tuao that is to slaughter and he slaughters you for his any purpose of his belly so he says first he steals to kill and the third one he teaches to destroy the words followed by and and their copulative conjunctions or cumulative conjunctions going together where there is the first work it will be eventually followed by the second and then by the third so the first one he steal at you from the pleasure what you would get by becoming a disciple to the word of lord god joining as a disciple and growing up as gramatias from there he destroys you and then he steal at you and then he slaughters you for any purpose and he absolutely destroys you the word apolumi what does it meant to say to entirely abolish and to make it to become useless the present christendom has been headed by such congregations it's a very bad fate to look what the word of lord god has designed them to be and what they have become they have become as by following the instructions of this ruined men who have come to gain their authority as their authority for their own gain but they haven't come to teach what is the truth so they come for the destruction of the flesh so with at external ills and troubles by which the lusts of the flesh are subdued and later on they have been destroyed in the present time it is a happy thing for them because their lusts has been subdued but in the later time we find that they have been ruined or destroyed so this is what the thief does kleptes does the one who doesn't care to nurture you the one who doesn't care to make you to become disciples the one who doesn't come over here to feed you with the right word of lord god so what happens the bible records he comes as a kleptes for his own gain in his own confidence and he do not instruct men by the word of lord god but he leads them according to his own mind and what does he do he cometh to steal to kill and to destroy the first he steals of your spiritual life he slaughters you out and he destroys you the way first he has been fed with his own lustful patterns and later on he will be consumed in the same manner he is making you to become an eternal misery right now on this earth even the things to follow in the heaven for that cause he cometh but he says over here i that is referring to christ jesus and his mentoring and his mentoring team that is the bona fide work of the pastor teachers in the present time i am come again the word erkomai to come to pass that followed by hina in order that they might have the word might have is echo to hold and what they might have have to hold in the possession what is known as the life called as zoe true life and what is this true life we are having eternal life but the life that we need to enjoy on this earth the life that we need to show for to the world this true life he says that they might have life and that they might have again copulative conjunction kai followed by echo zoe kai echo and how we would have it he says echo zoe kai echo and then perisos the word perisos meant to say exceeding the number where with our measure of rank that has been needed or the word meant to say super abundantly or exceedingly or supremely and that's what today the church age is not enjoying this super abundance of life in Christ Jesus by becoming his disciples and dear brethren he said in verse 9 of john 10 that he is the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved so so and shall go in and out and find the word find over here is herisco he will come to meet with the word called as pasture which is nothing but the word of lord god and today you are not entering by the door what lord god the father has given you so that you have been now 
taken care in the captivity of these thieves, that is, false pastor teachers, who do not care to nurture you, who do not care to give you right word of God. So this false pastor teacher, they also come, but what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy, to make your life eternal misery on this earth as well as in the heaven. But he hath come that they might have life, and that they might have, have it more abundantly. And then what is the work of a good shepherd? The word good is kalos, that which is beautiful, handsome. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. But the one who is again the word, what he uses is misthotes, the one who has been hired. And not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and liveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. And then he said, I am the good shepherd, and known my sheep, and I am known of mine. And as the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my word call over here is suke, that is what soul, for the sheep. And talking to the other sheep, he talks about the church age believers. So here we find three things. Number one, kleptes. Number two, mistotes. At the same time, the good shepherd. And the one, what does he do? Laying down his life for us. And when we have this good shepherd, he says, you come in to believe in Christ for the purpose of having abundant life. And in order to have that abundant life, we need to look upon the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which has been graciously granted and given to every believer in the church age. And that's what, dear brethren, coming to Nehemiah chapter 9, we read in verse number 12, Moreover, you led them in a day by a cloud pillar, and in the night by a pillar of fire, to give them light. What is that light? The Hebrew word is or, so that they could become light illuminated, and light which causes them to shine. And where they walk, they walk in the way, direct the course of life, wherein they should halak, that should become their manner of life. But today, dear brethren, Job chapter 19, verses 25 and 26, we know very well that it is not happening to you all to realize these things because you are still allowed to have in you those things which are absolutely vain and vague. So he says, I am acquainted with my kinsman, with my Christ, and it is he who now liveth in me, and the one who is liveth, it is he who makes me to stand, that is what in this dust, the standing of Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ image being confirmed in us, after the things that I have received, that I have known my Lord. And coming to verse 26, after this skin has been destroyed or been absolutely Absolutely annihilated. That's what putting to death the old sin nature and living for Christ. Then in my flesh, the word basar, we read that the word basar meant to say origin of the word from basar, which is called good news, glad tidings, or what we preach, or in simple words that we publish as a messenger, the good tidings of the Lord God, at in this basar, the good tidings, I shall prophesy of Jehovah Elohim. And the same thing over here for us, dear brethren, if we fail to, pro to pronounce the things of Lord God, then the reason is that we haven't yet met the anointing power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. In Isaiah chapter 61, dear brethren, we have been said that the unction which has been given for us, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because to go and to preach good tidings unto those who have not known Christ, and he has sent them to bind up or bandage or saddle up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captivities, and to the opening of the prison to them that are bound, and then to preach the acceptable ear of Lord God. The word acceptable is nothing but rats on approval, the will which is of Lord God's great desire, the will which is of Lord God's great favor. And that's what we have been called, to have this right son approval of Lord God in this year as we read the divine offering which has been accepted in the sight of Lord God in the Greek of Luke chapter 4, saying the word dactos. There it is what it has been given as a great acceptable year of my Christ. And dear brethren, we have in this church such kind of a great privilege. 
in order to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord God, we have great privilege and great things rather than the way how the things pertaining to Joshua he could do in Joshua chapter 10. We read when the war was against the Gibeonites and he claims over them when the five kings they come against the people of the Gibeonites, he prayed to God to say sun and moon to stand still. The authority what he had over there, we look in the same Joshua chapter 8 verses 32, teaching to us that he engraved the word of Lord God upon the stone. And that's what we look, the man engraving is nothing but a scribe. The one who writes the word of Lord God is a scribe. And the power given to a scribe is what he says, till now no man has been, till now Lord God hasn't heard any man like that to stop one whole day the sun and the moon in the same spot so that as a scribe he could do the will of God. Today we have been said we are greater than John the Baptist and John the Baptist was greater than all of these one who have been born in the past dispensation. Then how much more of a power we have been given so that we could enumerate the character of Christ in us and proclaim the truth to the world. We are something far higher and far greater, dear brethren. The greater you neglect to believe these things or reject to believe these things, you will not have a meaning in your life to look and to enjoy the more abundant life by becoming a disciple and growing up as grammatias in Christ. Your life has been still leveled off with the standards of this world as we were reading in Ezra chapter 9 verse 11 when he says, The world what it is, the people what they are filled with, and what it is that they have been encompassed with from one mouth to another. And then he calls them religious impurity. And what is the land that they go? He said it is a menstrual sickened land. And then what are the people they are? The people they are also menstrually sickened people. And what is the thinking? No matter however moral they may be, however good they may be, however fantastic they may be, we all find them standing to be menstrual sickness in the sight of Lord God. But the same people, what Lord God has called in the past menstrual sickness, and he says in Amos chapter 3, that apart from the Israelites I know not anyone, bestowing grace upon us in the churches through Christ Jesus, he makes us now render qualified fit in the Lord, and whosoever believes upon him to them, he gave the power to become the sons of Lord God and qualifying us not to be called as anything common now, but now to be holy and blameless, being born in the churches before the foundation of the world and completely executing the will of God. So our strategy has been changed, our position, what we were earlier has been changed. We are now into something of a great position in the Lord. Therefore, we could use this flesh as Job describes, to be acquainted with our Redeemer, Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, so that he could be enumerated in us. It is no longer we who live, but Christ who liveth in us, as we read in Galatians 4.19. Till Christ could be formed in you, I take the pains of a birth pangs of a woman, he said. And then he claims the two things in the verse 26. And the first one he says, first this flesh has to be destroyed. The flesh refers to the old sin nature life. The flesh which refers to every mannerism of wickedness or spiritual menstrual sicknesses. What the world is going through, anything that which is good in the sight of man is an abomination to the Lord because we have to go back in the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And that's what the lesson he teaches to us in Numbers 9 as well as in Nehemiah 9 to tell that as long as the cloud was there to lead them, they used to stop there. And when the cloud moved, they moved. No doubt it was a matter of two days, one month of one year. So we have been given direction to walk in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit in this church age as long as Lord God the Father seemeth fit for us in the church age as confirming to his image that is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ like New Testament prophets and showing forth the great and unique will of that great Lord God the Father in heaven. That's a very simple process for us. The process which is lacked for us in our pulpit today. So he said in verse 26 of Job 19, number one, the flesh has to be put to death. The same thing what Christ our Lord our God teaches through Apostle Paul in Colossians 3, 5. Put to death, necrosate. If you have been risen with Christ, seek those things that are above, the remaining things put to death. Do not be looking upon them any longer. Because he said even to speak of those things, what they do in darkness, it's a shame. What a sad thing it is for us to understand. 
that the present Christendom have lost it completely to realize the reconcile and to walk in the path of the Lord God. And why he says that we need to put to death this flesh? Because there is a work that in this flesh, Basir, what you read the word, it is called as good tidings. That this flesh now has to be completely converted to become the good news, to preach like a messenger, like a herald. That's why, you know, we have a passage for us in Isaiah 61, 6. It's a very beautiful passage because of this anointing power, what has been given for us in the church age. He says that in verse number 6, you shall be named, cried out, the priests of the Lord. What is the word priests? Kohen. And what the work of the priest was? To differentiate what is between holy and unholy and to teach them the truth, what has been demanded in the Bible. So what was the work of the priests? We look in the book of Leviticus. Number one, it is to go back and teach the word of Lord God, make disciples, Mantano did ask how. That is what Lama they wanted to make. And the same thing we read in Malachi too. What went wrong? They corrupted. They were no longer recognized as the priests of the Lord God. They were no longer recognized as the Sharat covenants of our Lord God. So opening back to Malachi, we find a word for us in chapter 2. The reasons what went wrong is that they have made the things pertaining to the word of Lord God as worthless and, and, and base, or the standards of the base, what we call to be as humiliated because they have not kept the ways of the Lord God, not guarded, neither they were true to the word of Lord God, but looking upon the faces, they went along to preach, and therefore they became absolutely unloyal to the Lord. The structure of the failure, what the work of the Levites was. But over here he wants to call us now in Isaiah 61, 6, a new brand of priests. The church age priesthood. The priesthood who would follow this great covenant of Lord God, what he has given in Malachi 2. The covenant of life and peace. To teach them what is the word of Lord God. If you have your Bible in 2, 5, he says, My covenant with them was life and peace. And I gave them for the fear wherewith he feared and was offered before my name. That is what the reverence, what we need to pay to the Lord. And then he says, the law of truth was in his mouth. But today you find claptes to the cause. That's what we read in John 10.10, 10, the one who do not nurture the word of Lord God. Do you know what is the mentioning of a pastor, teacher, PT? It is not just pastor. The title has to be pastor, teacher. What is his work? It is to teach. Teaching shepherds are Lord God's ideal shepherds. Lord God's ideal church is what in Acts chapter 9 verse 35 we read, the word of Lord God which teaches to them that edification every day in Bible doctrine. That's an ideal church. An ideal pastor is a pastor teacher who teaches. That's his duty. It is to nurture, but we find the thief, he cometh, kleptos, he cometh not to nurture. If any pastor teacher doesn't teach to you every day, just take it granted they are kleptes. Either there are no hearers for him, every day he would record that and put in the YouTube so that the YouTube men at least could record and could listen and understand. Because we are clear to be in the sight of Lord God, not before men. And some people also put every day in the YouTube thinking that every day they will preach. But they will preach useless, worthless things for six minutes or eight minutes, but never they will come to realize it's a daily process from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 20-21 to to be taught to the congregation. They put every day for what? They put that which is useless, baseless things. And they talk to you silly things. They do not even understand because they are not in the original language of the scriptures. As long as the pastor teacher fails to communicate in the original language of the scriptures, so long you just think you are just being destroyed in your life. But the time comes because of this Isaiah 61, 6, he says, or the anointing power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, he says. Once again, Malachi 2, 5 through 8 will be fulfilled. Or 2, 5 through 7, it will be fulfilled because he said... The law of truth was in his mouth and iniquity was not found in his lips. The word iniquity is nothing but evil, injustice. Unrighteous standards were not, not found in his lips. The word lips for us is shafeh. And then 
He says, He walked with me in peace and equity. The word peace is nothing but the shalom contrite completeness. The word equity is nothing but for us, Mishayor, meant to say he walked with us in Yashir standards to be upright all the times. And then followward, and, and he follows that, and did, and did turn many away from iniquity. The same thing in the birth of John the Baptist in Luke chapter 1 verses 13 through 17 we find. He said, what does John the Baptist do? They will turn many from their iniquities, the disobedient apathy as children. They will turn them to the work of Lord God and they will prepare a people for the law. And you are greater than John the Baptist, and by that we refer to the church. Every individual believer who believes in my Christ is not just the work of a pastor, teacher, or an evangelist. The bona fide gift has been given till all could come to the unity of the knowledge, the word katharismos, completion in the complete growth. And the word knowledge over there, it has to be epinosis, the full growth. And everyone should come for that purpose so that everyone now has been given this work. The work to prepare people for Lord God. The work to prepare the men who have been given by Lord God for His glory. So we look the word. The word over here till all could come to the unity of knowledge. And the knowledge over here is apinosis. Full knowledge. That is the purpose of our life now. If you haven't been made by pastor teacher to look what is this and turn away many from the iniquity, the word iniquity, that which is disagreeable to sight of the Lord God, even nature, that is called as the mischief standards, what is when they are looking. But what the priest would do, he said, the law of truth was in his mouth and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and uprightness and did turn, that is the word shiv meant to say, he made them to take a U-turn, many away from their iniquity. And then we read over here, we which has been lacking to the core in our pulpits, for the priest's lips should keep the word, keep his shamer to God, to protect and to absorb what? Nothing but the ethyl knowledge. The word knowledge over here is nothing but to get acquainted with the mind of Christ. And they should seek the people who are there, Bakash, they should inquire what the law. But what do you inquire from a pastor teacher today? You want to inquire about your peace. You want to inquire about the standards of your life. You want to inquire about the marriage. Or in simple terms, the menstrual sicknesses of this world, wherewith they inquire to their man-made gods, which are no gods at all. You are also inquiring for a pastor teacher in those standards, because this pastor teacher is also in the standards of such menstrual sickness being filled in this earth. If not, he would first wake up to teach you the word of truth, to walk before Lord God in peace and in equity that is called as uprightness, straightforwardness in the word of Lord God. Therefore, he teaches to us that men should come to seek what? Torah. Where? At his mouth. Pani im, face to face. That's what it is, mouth to mouth. Because he is the angel, Malak, what we call messenger of Yehovah Sabaoth. And then he writes again, after these three verses, but conjunction of contrast in the above things, you are departed out of the way. The word departed is nothing but you have turned aside. You have apostatized. You have forsaken what is the truth of the word of Lord God. And not only just forsaken, now we are trying to make it to disappear in your pulpits. And this is the present real condition of the Christendom that has been there being headed by false pastor teachers, including to know the word called as kleptes. And why we call anyone kleptes? If he isn't making disciples for the word of Lord God, take it granted, dear brethren, he is just as kleptes to the cause. No matter what great ministry he may have, no matter what great knowledge he may have, no matter whatever great things he may have. And as the brethren quote, when, Philip, when Peter says himself in First Peter 5, that I am an elder, but they forgot the work of eldership as mentioned in Titus 1.5, though 
Titus was not there as an elder, but he was been called in the power, in the rank of an apostle by, Timoth by, by Paul to teach that, that he was to appoint elders though, so that that which is lacking, that he has to rectify, and that which has been rectified, it has to be erected, and that which has been erected, it has to be established in practice, which is the prescription or the demands of the word of Lord God. At least you will find there in Titus 1.5, the work of an elder to appoint elders that's the reason i have left you in crete why because the elders should take care but today you will find elders in the church as one committee quarreling against another committee and the elders as per deuteronomy 23 and 24 when we read it says that they have to enumerate the word of lord god upon a stone like joshua he did in chapter 8 The problems why the churches are having such kind of a departure from the word of truth. Elders, they love to have their pastors. So that that pastor would favor that committee. And the brethren assembly, they love to call you to be elder. Even you find a lot of fights and troubles in this brethren assemblies as well. Part A, part B. You'll find part A, part B. But the real work of elders, he said in Titus 1.5, that which is lacking. And today they are lacking the grammatias in our pulpits. They are lacking grammatias in our pews so that they could go back and make once again disciples for my Christ. Isn't it lacking today in our pulpits? We don't have enough disciples for us. But the elders are blinded up by the money what they get in the congregation. Elders are blinded up by the pomp of their lust of power, what they have been given in their congregations. And they haven't come to look what is the right will and the right purpose of my Lord. These elders, what we look, is really a shame. And now the congregations in the Brethren Assemblies as well, they love to have elders, but they do not want to have Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, who has appointed for them to have a pastor teacher. You know what he has called you and from where you have fallen. You have fallen from your true life to become as a New Testament prophet. The very tongue that has been given for you is to proclaim the good news, he said, in 1 Peter 4, 10 and 11. If ever you open up your mouth as divine oracles, Colossians 4, 5 and 6, seasoned with salt, every word of you, so that every word that doesn't produce the character and the effective gospel of my Lord, you are answerable to the Lord God because of this great anointing mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, given for us the passages in John chapter 13 and following. Every Argatha's word, because you as a believer in Christ Jesus, now you are as good as God to these people. And do you know what these men love to have on this earth? They don't love to go back and, and preach the standards of Eloha, that is 430 called. They love to make gods according to their own standards as 410 called. And they go to ask to that God, what will be our life? The Bible records them. These are menstrual sickened men. They have made the work of their own hands to be their gods. But the same standards of the work of their own hands, what have been found in the world, they have been existing in our pulpits as well. The same standards, what has been happening in the world for this idolatry worship, Churches have also following the same standards of idolatry worship, favoring parties upon parties. Because they want to completely forsake. They want to make completely disappearing of the right word of Lord God in our pulpits. Therefore, with great pain when Lord God the Father is penning those words in, Math in Malachi 2, 8, But you have departed. You should walk with me in equity and in peace. The life, that covenant which I made with you was of life, Kea, 2, 4, 1, 6, and peace. Because the same thing he says in Job 19.25, My Redeemer liveth, 2, 4, 1, 6. I know that my kinsman liveth in me. I need to seek and search like the way how Queen Sheba came all the way to inquire hard difficult questions before Solomon. The word we read, 2, 4, 2, 0, concerning the life of El, the way how you have to become a God to these people. And to whom the word of Lord God came, he said, you are gods to these people. 
She came to inquire such questions. She came to inquire such great truth. And when she was inquiring such great truth, now she's going to live a life of 2421, for which cause we have been said, ask, seek, knock. Ask, you shall be given. Seek, in order to find it, you will be found. Knock, so that you could get back till you could get the work, like the way how blind Bartimaeus did in Mark chapter 10. And Lord God the Father says to him, you can go in a way, Upago. But he had never, he did not have any other way apart from the way, Hodas, Christ. Anyone who makes Christ of the Lord of a God as Rabboni, he has only one way, the way of Christ. But since you haven't made Rabboni to be your Lord, you have made only Kurios to be your Lord. If you make Christ Jesus of the Lord of a God as Rabboni, you would be disciples and you would enjoy the more abundant life. That life which right now we need to enjoy on this earth. You are not realizing that life of great Rabboni being disciples of the word of Lord God. You are being under always under that claptes, thieves. Who come to destroy, who come to steal, kill and destroy. Make you miserable. And you go again to search solutions for your misery by going to such and such dear, dear doctor, so and so to be a pastor, teacher. And you go there and he says, come to my church, take oil, take kerchiefs, do this, do that and follow it. Because you're following thieves. Doesn't he say for us in Matthew chapter 10? Anyone who loves more than me, his own daughter or son, he's not worth. Anyone who loves more than me, his father or mother, he's not worthy for me to be as a disciple. Do you think I came on this earth to send peace? No, he said, I came to give sword. Macarian sword. The sword which could divide apart into two things. He has given, he has come so that we could understand the word of Lord God should reign in us and we are now no longer slaves to the lustful patterns of the old sin nature. The way on the day of Exodus 32, when Levites came apart, the description found in Deuteronomy 33, 8 through 11, even if you would come out for the work of Lord God, neither regarding your parents, neither regarding your own brothers and sisters, neither regarding your own children, and those who bow down to that calf, he cut them off. And in the day they were nearly 3,000 men. And now what was the word given to the Levites, he says, to teach? Because he did not spare himself before them. The same thing in Matthew, he says, Do you think I came to give peace? No, forget it, dear brother. Now it is a time of sword, and the man's enemies will be from his own household, said the Lord. You'll have trouble when you're going to take in your cross every day and follow my Christ. And then how sharp you need to be, how cunning you need to be. Because people may think cell phone. The word cell is nothing but earlier used for to be behind the bars. Now phone has become for them as a cell. And where do they give the time to come back and carry their cross every day? The much of the time what they spend in the smartphones? If they would wake up and realize they have been easily dragged being under Satan's yoke. They have been dragged in the trap of Satan. And they would just throw it apart. And they would know their first focus what it is in their life. No matter what, I haven't forgotten your commandments, O Lord. I always stick and abide with thy word. And no matter what it is, O oh Lord, first give number one priority for me to grow up as grammatias. For that cause I am ready to sacrifice everything in my life. And God the Father seeks such dedication in you first. Until and unless you have such dedication, until and unless you come for such dedication in the word of Lord God, you would be still under the claptase ministry of false pastor teachers. But the true pastor teachers do not depart. They do not forsake. They do not make it to disappear what is the right covenant given for us in the church age. The faithful pastor teachers always look to be faithful to the Lord God, not and never to men, because they know very well 
No weapon that is formed against them will ever prosper because the righteousness, what we have, is the righteousness of my Christ in us. And since we are having such great work, the works of our hands that is to become as a scribe and to teach, that will be blessed, that will be accepted. And when we are making this, then no matter whatever it is that they are against us, their lions will be smitten off. The strength in their back will be gone forever. And then those who hate us, he said, they can never rise up in their life. Such is the great power of a pastor teacher given to us in the church age. Not to use it for destruction, but to edify you. That's what Apostle Paul writes in Second Corinthians. The power that has been given for us for your edification, not for destruction. People are happy to go for destruction because they gain only money and not to nurture and mature you in the word of Lord God. So, dear brethren, the conjunction of contrast, what we read, you shall be called as a priest of the Lord. And then he said, you shall be ministers to my God. But what do we read over here? Conjunction of contrast, what do we read? He says, you have departed, departed from the true life, what I have called you. The law of truth was in your mouth. People would come to inquire thorough from your mouth. And you did turn away many ones from their iniquity, but... You departed. The same truth abides for us as well in the church age. Knowing not why you become a pastor. Knowing not why you want to come into the field. Like reverence and doctorates. Into this work which is not yours. Because people are so blind. Thinking that they are well qualified in the standards of this world and they are having their work to do with the Lord. No way, dear brother, they don't have any work. They have only their work to do with their belly on this earth. And they don't have anything else than that, dear brethren. Their God is their belly, their glory is their shame. And why it is so? Because they mind earthly things. Every believer's body has been called to be now the good tidings. Preaching and letting know the world, the things of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Like a prophet. And why it is a prophet the word used over there? Because the word, what the word of Lord God teaches to the present Christendom believers, what they speak, they will come to pass. They will not fail. And that's the power given for every believer. The power to be like a prophet, the prophet of the Most High Lord God. Every believer in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to be such power. But when the priests fail to teach, they make you to get stumbled. That is to make you to become scandalizer, to move up and down. First they depart, they apostatize, they forsake, and they try to disappear these things. And second, they will make you to stumble. And what do they do? They corrupt, shaket, that is to destroy, to mar. And completely, what do they do? They try to waste it. The covenant of Levi, which is nothing but to make disciples, to teach them, them in Leviticus chapter 4, in teaching the very purpose of their life was to make disciples. To differentiate what is right and good. To differentiate between what is good and evil. To tell them what is holy and profane. That's what they were, but they departed. Therefore, he said, the lives of this present Christian pastor teach us as well. It is not in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to serve the Lord, but they have become baza, that is vile and worthless, and their lives are depressed. They are being so depressed that they are not able to get the reasons why they are depressed. Coming to Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 10 and following, we read, saying that, I will send your wives to other men. Your young men will perish. The things pertaining to the great and unique word of Lord God, he teaches to us there and he says, your wives will be sent to other men, but they will not understand how it is that they have become so base or so depressed. The reason, he says, before all the people I will do this, accordingly, the word accordingly meant to say, pay as per your extremity, you have not kept, shamer, guarded, 
what my ways that is what you haven't had the course of life what i wanted you and what you were you have been partial looking upon the faces you taught them looking upon their desires you taught them but did not teach what was my desire you did not look what was my intention in making them to be the disciples of the word of lord god you haven't thought what which was right in my sight demanding but he read over here he says that but have been partial looking upon the faces pleasing them for the sake of your money and very very you were partial in the law therefore dear brethren in jeremiah chapter 1 until and unless you have been given the bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church he will not have this valor and vigor and girts because he said therefore you grid up the lions the word grid up is nothing but encompass the lions are nothing but where the strength of a man would be and come arise and speak unto them all that have commanded thee as a charge which have given to you be not dismayed that is be shattered out from their faces or get yourself to be broken in pieces because i will confound you before them therefore he said for behold i have made you this day and this day what he has made when you believe in the lord and savior jesus christ growing up in grace and the knowledge of bible doctrine as a pastor teacher getting practiced this day a defensed city that is what fortification as a great stronghold and an iron pillar brazel that is called as an iron pillar engraving whatever you write with the pen of an iron that's what it would be as the great word of lord god to become as a scribe you are fortified so that you will not be broken up in becoming a scribe or fulfill the work as a scribe like an iron pillar because iron point was been used to write and the word pillar over here for us is nothing but as a column upright to be erected and those who are come to them i will give to be as pillars he said so every pastor teacher would be in this way as an iron pillar and brazen walls and the word brazen or brass what we look over here signifies that all the time the lord's justice which is been giving to you to pass through in its unyielding justification so this brass always recognizes for us that you are being justified so how you would be in this brass walls the word walls is command that is nothing but again for us a wall of protection so first you are a defensive city fortified in your land so that there is nothing that can break up and then he says you will be as an iron pillar that is to erect the word of lord god in writing down the word of christ and then you will be brazen walls the brass speaks about lord's great justification and that is what we have to be the lord's glory to this people and then this word what we look meant to say copper or brass like walls you would be and bear against the whole land that is for every inner man against the kings of juda against the princes against the priests against the people of the land and dear brethren against the whole land against the kings the word kings is nothing but malak against the princes that is nothing but the rulers against the priests the pri the prophets or the priests that time and against the people you find over here the categories kings princes priests and the people of the land of all of these things you will be like a brazen walls no matter tomorrow they may come up against you to destroy they cannot that's what he meant to say for us and they shall fight against you that's what he says but they shall not prevail against thee the word prevail is nothing but for us ya call they cannot overcome or endure for i am with thee said the lord that is the declaration of lord god to not sail to rescue you by snatching out from this people 
but what you have to be i have made you nathan this day the word is nothing but i have given you a best order upon you number one to be as a defensive city great fortification great happiness nothing could touch you as we read in 1 john 5 18 there is nothing in this world that can touch you because you are born of god satan cannot even touch you and every believer has been given this privilege to grow up as grammatias in Christ so that the world cannot touch you. So we find over here as a defensive city. And number two, iron pillar. The column which would be erected straight enough as a pastor teacher by becoming a scribe. Iron represents back to right to be engraved upon the rocks. And that's what it is, an iron ore or a tool of an iron as a Cutting tool to implement and to write. And what it will be? Brazen walls. And you will be protected when you grow up as the word of Lord God teaches to us as the brazen walls. And the word for us, when you are being grown up like this, there will be nothing that could be against you in the land or in the world. And in the world you may find the departments like the kings, the prince, the priests and all the people. Nothing they can do anything for you. There is nothing that can harm you. Fulfilling Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that is formed against thee will ever prosper. But the only fact what is lacking is, dear brethren, you are destroying your own self. Because by forsaking the covenant of the Lord God, yet for us a great privilege in Isaiah 61, 6. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. If we as pastor teachers do our work, then the believers would grow up to tell like Job 19, 25 and 26. The believers would grow up and tell in the standards of this Job that in my flesh we have been destroyed. We are no longer walking in the flesh. And yet we being destroyed in the flesh, we would now make from this flesh baser, the good news, the glad tidings of the Lord God to be proclaimed. And the word what we find over there, it is not just to preach, but prophesy. The same thing in Amos 3.8. When Lord God has spoken, who is it that he will not prophesy? That's what we, we have been given the completed can of scripture. And every believer has to be in the work, not just to foretell your vain visions, but to tell what is there in the Bible, looking in the present terms and applying to the present situation and telling to them what is happening in the present criteria. That was the work of the prophets where they take the then existing pandemic sicknesses and they would tell them, now it is COVID. So we tell them, be aware, wake up. Come back to the plan of God. Because never in the history we would find the churches being locked down because of this COVID. And that's a sign for us to understand we need to wake up. And if a heart is not looking in the standards of Lamentations 1.22, because there also we read the word, your heart sighs, because the word says sighs in the Hebrew, meant to say, the K, that is called menstrual sickness. Looking upon the fate of these people, if you don't come back, to do that which is right and perfect in the will of Lord God. You are really lacking the work of Lord God in your pulpits, dear brethren. So the men, but you shall be named, he said, the priests of the Lord. Mention call, that is Amer, saying that you are ministers of our God. The word ministers is nothing but sharat. And sharat meant to say who are in a serious responsibility towards the work of Lord God. It's not just like a joke, they do it. But it involves a very serious responsibility to work in the work of Lord God. So... They call to be the Sharat workers of our Lord God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast yourselves. And that's the other part. The word meant to say you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. If an unbeliever who is dying without knowing my Christ has been lost forever, isn't it? But even through his life, that the word of Lord God has to be prophesied, as Joel 2.32 goes on to teach, you know. It is like that, he said. 
the people in the dispensation of the Israelites were given that chance but they failed but now it comes upon the people of this church and in the church anyone who believes in Christ has been in the Lord and when you as an unbeliever believe in Christ and be edified in the word of Lord God joining as disciples and grow up as grammatias even you would show forth the riches of these Gentiles what is that riches? the glory of my Christ to the lips of your praise that comes through your lips giving thanks and living a life of truth. And then we read, in their glory you shall boast. You know, when he said, you are my joy and my crown, Apostle Paul writing to the people of Philippians. The same thing over here, you will, you will rejoice in the glory of such great one in the Lord. Therefore he says, and in their glory you shall boast. The word boast is nothing but yamer, and you will be having to boast yourselves. You will exchange their glory as a boast. It is not that what wealth you have on this earth, what name you have on this earth, it is what you have done for my Lord. As a pastor teacher, the people will come and ask you, you are the responsibility man. The same thing we find in First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, as to be the people accounted before God and men, as in the sight of God and the sight of men, as people, as he says, to be the stewards of the mysteries of my Lord. The same thing in First Corinthians 4, 1, let a man so account of us. The word account is logizomai, to recount, or to compute, or to make us, that we are the ministers of Christ. The word ministers is huperetes. The word meant to say a servant, the one who serves with his hands in the work of Lord God. So as a subordinate servant to Christ and stewards of the mystery of Lord God, then who should account it? He says, men. The same principle of Isaiah 61, 6, they will call you the ministers of Lord God because you are now called to be the voice of Lord God as New Testament prophets that never existed earlier, but now it exists in the church age. And what a great privilege we have. The life that is so crystal clear for us. But you are losing the great abundant life by believing the liars in your church by believing the kleptes which are reigning in your pulpits it's a very sad thing dear brethren to note what the word of Lord God demands and what is that you're performing every believer has been called as the minister of the word of Lord God and let the people account he said not only the ministers, but also we are the stewards of the mystery. The word stewards, again, is nothing but iconomas. The word iconomas, Ephesians 3, 1 and 2, teaches dispensations. That's why we ask you, if you are a pastor teacher, exegete the passages in the proper standards of isagogics and categories with the right dispensing technique of dispensations. The word stewards is nothing but iconomas administrator of this New Testament in the spirit of being to edify the word of Lord God to divide the difference between the Israel before Joel 2.32 which is said which would be fulfilled in the lives of those Israelites they lost it because they should be had the prophets and after the way now when Christ of Lord of God has come and the church age begin now also they lost it kaput forever till the rapture of the church and in the 78th week certain few and after that what do we find in the millennium that will be fulfilled so differentiating between these things as iconomas the things in the past the things which are now in the present the things which are to be yet in the future so let them account of us that we are the dispensationalists and the dispensationalist could know the mysteries of God and that's a great privilege, the mysteries of Lord God. And when you have known that mystery in the church age, every believer's body being the temple of the true living Lord of a God, the sole and true purpose of every believer in the church age, it demands that in this flesh you put to death the all sin nature, and in the same flesh now it should become the glad tidings, the great tidings. 
the great and unique good tidings of my Christ in the same flesh. You have to prophesize it. You have to prophesize the great and unique deeds of my Lord. The great unction given for us. The great anointing given for us. How many of the men will call you that you are the ministers of God? That you are in the serious responsibility of Lord's glory? How many of them are really calling you that you are priests of the Lord? As pastor teachers, what are you doing? As believers, have you made them to become in the sharath responsibility of the Lord? As dispensationalist, they call dispensation as a cult. There may be people who might have rough information about dispensations and writing their books. But not having the right and true information about these dispensations, many men they have lost. What is the great and unique will of that great Lord God the Father? And Apostle Paul himself says in Ephesians 3, 2, If you have read my knowledge in these dispensations, Iconomas, and yet, dear brethren, the life that has been given for us, the truth that has been revealed in our hands, the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit that reigns in us. We find very, very few people who could walk in that spirit of Lord God's thinking. Apart from that, men are walking in their ministerial sickened brains. They are looking for temporary solutions for the problems of this life rather than coming back to walk with my Lord in equity and in peace. The life that he has designed for us and the peace that he has given for us rather than walking in that they are walking in this world in the standards of their income. And that it's a great problem that we don't find enough men teaching the word of Lord God exegetically day by day. And yet, though they are very few to teach every day, day by day, there aren't enough men to watch the videos which have been given for them to look their life. What a sad thing it is for us to not. We are not worried because Lord God the Father has made every pastor teacher to be being erected by his glory as the great words we read in Jeremiah 118. Number one work, the protection what he has given, the fortification what he has given, there is nothing that could surpass it. In that protection, every pastor teacher should be like an iron pillar that is nothing but has a scribe erecting out the word of Lord God. And when he's doing it, he will have with him brazen walls surrounded. That is, his thinking cannot be broken up. There is nothing that can make his heart to be tender-hearted by the thinking of this world. There is nothing that he could forsake by looking into the standards of the world and say, this is correct. But he looks only the word of Lord God. That's why it has been made as a brass on walls to move from brass to gold, to graduate in it. The Lord's great righteousness to be justified in him and show forth to the world. And as he goes on in that, there we find, though all the world being put together, though the entire fallen angels together, including the head, which is Satan, there is nothing they can disturb him. Nothing, because Lord God snatches away to deliver him out from this present evil world. <laughs> Therefore, we have been given such great precious promises and the right bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teaches to teach you the right truth so that you could establish your life in this flesh, being erected Christ in you, conforming to his glory. And to not only just to conform to his glory, opening your mouth as New Testament prophet, preaching the prophecy, good news of the Lord to this perishing world. And yet, dear brethren, how many days more? The life that you live, if it doesn't match to the glory of Lord God, how many days more? You come empty-handed, you go empty-handed. What is the worth of it? 
Make use of this flash to the Lord's glory to the highest. For what cause he has kept us alive to be in this church age to the praise of his work forever. Dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of his glory in his grace. With our head, board and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for you for very simple, believing Christ you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to care to sow lagan, herald the word in season and out of season, because the diamantrum of witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one diamantrum of witnesses in dwelling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamantrum of witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great revelation we have in Thy words, O Lord. Called to be Thy ministers, known, make known in the people to be Thy priests. And yet, O Lord, we are not enjoying the riches of the Gentiles, neither we are boasting in them, O Lord, by making them disciples. Strengthen us, O Lord, as you have said, that you will make us to be protection. Iron pillar, that is to be as a scribe, and to make us to be as a brazen walls against all these people, O Lord, and to eradicate everyone who is not becoming a scribe, but rather educate and edify them to teach you have to be a scribe and to do the will of God. Help us, Father, in reading these things to get glory unto thee to the maximum as long as your breath in our nostrils, because this life which you have given for us is unique, and this life which you have made for us in the glorious pillar of Paul to our privileges before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless is absolutely fantastic to learn and to enjoy. Help us, Father, to witness thy truth in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, working in us mightily to do thy glory, and nothing else than that we have any desire on this earth. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by these words. Amen.